Welcome to the center line. 32 years ago, I raised my right hand and took an oath to serve our country and preserve our most precious values, our freedom and our way of life. During those 32 years, I have been honored to do just that while leading our nation's finest against a broad spectrum of those who would do us harm. In 1981, I had no clue how to wear the uniform, let alone how to defend freedom against our Cold War adversaries. What I came to appreciate more as time went on was the amazing quality and can-do attitude of the people I served with and the impact we, as a team, were able to make for our mission. Serving this nation was my cause for the last three decades. And as my time in uniform concludes, I'd like to first say thank you to the best total force airmen, civilians, and contractor partners in the world. Those who give all, believe in the team, and make us the greatest engineering force in the world. Leading the way and serving with you has truly been an experience I will cherish forever as we build to last and lead the change for our Air Force. This is my last time in front of the camera as a civil engineer. It is a bittersweet experience. On one hand, looking back on the last four years, I have never been prouder to say I had the opportunity to serve with you, the greatest civil engineer force in the world. On the other, I would truly miss the opportunity I had to go out to the bases and see our engineers lead the way every day, both in garrison and in an expeditionary environment. It was an inspirational experience and one I am grateful to have had. As stewards of our Air Force installations, our 3D power projection platforms, we are the backbone and foundation from which every airman defends our nation. All weapon systems, where they provide air and space superiority, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, rapid global mobility, global strike, and command and control are enabled from our installations. Our efforts allow us to deliver global vigilance, reach, and power for our nation today and well into the future. Our nation continuously evolves in meeting the changing security environment we find ourselves in. And Air Force civil engineers have led the way in transforming to remain relevant and ready in that turbulent environment. We strengthen our CE transformation foundation with an alignment of our structures to make CE as effective and efficient as possible. Our effort has left us in a strong position to navigate the current fiscal environment and sustained transformation provides us an opportunity to tighten our belts, to sharpen our processes, and intensify our focus on our enterprise-wide asset management approach. The challenges we face will provide each of you the opportunity to build on this foundation and strengthen it in the future. As part of CE transformation, we consolidated three legacy FOAs into the Air Force Civil Engineer Center. The consolidation provides a more efficient organization and processes while positioning AFCAC to best support operations worldwide. Through these years of transformation, we have never wavered from our enduring competencies of building ready engineers, building great leaders, and building sustainable installations. These are the foundation for everything we do. Building Ready Engineers has allowed us to emerge as its engineers of choice for joint installation engineering requirements in the combat zone. For more than a decade, we have been in every corner of the globe supporting combat and humanitarian operations with our joint brothers and sisters and allied friends. Throughout Operation Enduring Freedom, Iraqi Freedom, and New Dawn, Airmen Engineers, alongside contractors and our sister service engineers, built, operated, sustained and recovered our airfields and forward operating bases with precision and ingenuity. We continue this tradition of service and excellence in Afghanistan and elsewhere throughout the world. With our help, Iraqis took responsibility for their country and soon Afghans will too. We are building great leaders through formal education and training, a re-emphasis on civilian development to include our wage grade leaders and the daily motivation, mentoring, and team building you provide each other. I cannot stress enough how your leadership and mentoring strengthens the team and shapes the future of our force. We have also made significant progress in developing our enlisted force by getting back to basics. Through the large multi-craft work order program, on-the-job training, and funding of training courses at Avid, we have given our airmen the opportunities to build their technical skill sets. We have also made great strides within our officer corps deliberately developing and detailing career opportunities for this core element of our CE leadership team. 
the health and condition of our installations directly impacts our national defense. So we have never wavered from our building sustainable installations, the third leg in our multi-pronged strategy. By making the right investment in the right asset at the right time, the civil engineer community keeps our 3D weapon system platforms postured to meet the mission. Through your great efforts, we have stayed on the path towards 2020 by 2020, offsetting a previous 20% reduction in funding by reducing our physical plant by 20% by the year 2020. While this is a difficult undertaking, I am proud of the significant progress we have made towards this goal, and I encourage tough field leadership to keep the program moving forward. We have also leveraged the capabilities of private industry through enhanced use leases, privatization of certain utility systems, and CONUS housing, and third-party financing to present a win-win scenario for our installations and our private sector and community partners. These innovative initiatives leverage increased buying power at a time when government resources have drawn down and while still enabling combat power for our nation. All of these efforts continue a legacy of our proud heritage of engineers leading the way, a heritage built by over 500,000 engineers since the beginning of the Air Force. Finally, I'd like to take a moment to recognize that our contributions to America have come at a great personal cost and sacrifice. For more than a decade, we have annually sent more than 4,500 engineers into harm's way. Each of these men and women gave a portion of their life, their time, their family's time, and their energy and service to our nation. Some of them came home wounded. 23 of them made the ultimate sacrifice. All of them volunteered to dedicate a portion of their life to the protection of our nation and our way of life. We are uniquely blessed to call such men and women our fellow airmen. Within the hearts and minds of these airmen, tomorrow's battles will be won and challenges will become new opportunities for our promising future. I look forward to your accomplishments and contributions in the future. Serving alongside Major General Carter and the unquestioned leadership she will bring the civil engineer enterprise, I know civil engineers will continue to build to last and lead the change. Together, we have made a difference, and I challenge you to step up as we face new opportunities in the future. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for serving with me, and thank you for helping me build ready engineers, build great leaders, and build sustainable installations. And thank you for helping Air Force civil engineers lead the way.